to talk about the e-marketplaces. So e-marketplace is a virtual online market platform where the companies can register themselves as the buyer and the sellers to conduct the business online, right? So here again, the transaction happens over the internet. So the use of internet has right as rightly said that use of internet has helped us in removing a lot of intermediaries between the transaction because now it is possible with the help of web based information we can provide a lot of opportunities to the suppliers as well as the buyer they can interact directly with each other and uh, they can easily make use of it so it enables buyers to compare various products and services by different measures like performance the quality the price as we have already discussed a lot about it like here in e-marketplaces it really becomes easy uh, for the buyers to compare the prices to compare uh, the product right so it is very easy for them to understand like which is the product which they needs to buy so e-marketplaces uh, it uh, helps the buyers and sellers in a broad way so buyers can get access to the broader range of products and services and on the other hand you can see that sellers can also reach to the consumers more conveniently and affordably so it is very much affordable for the uh, consumers also sellers also get to enter into new markets they need to find new buyers and they increase the sales by generating more value for the buyers so this exactly happens when we talk about the e-marketplace that is electronic marketplace so here buying and selling happens online see it is same as the marketplace but here what we are talking about we are talking about the things which happens in the online form now let's understand various types of e-marketplaces. What are the types and which kind of e-marketplaces available? Like first here you can see is your electronic storefronts. Electronic storefronts again it is a e-marketplace where we can get to know like uh, the stores which are available online right so here uh, this e marketplaces this will uh, uh, it will really work as like uh, these stores uh, web stores or you can say uh, these storefronts so this uh, is a kind of a single company or the individual seller website where products and services are sold so web stores may target an industry or a location or a niche market uh, like uh, here uh, so many companies are there so the web stores may belong to a manufacturers uh, like here dell.com it is the best example of the storefront uh, to a retailer amazon.com so here to individual selling from home or to other business uh, they will come under the storefronts note here we need to make a note of that some companies refer to their web stores as portals right so here an electronic storefront is a website that represents a single store so today internet shoppers can access hundreds of thousands of electronic storefronts each storefront has a unique url uniform resource locator or internet address at which buyers can place orders each electronic storefronts are extension of physical stores such as like uh, the sharper images and the walmart so they have their physical stores also dmart also is the example they have their physical stores also they have their um, uh, online store also so other new businesses that are started by the entrepreneurs who discovered a niche on the web they will also come under the storefronts so manufacturers and the retailers also use their storefronts a web stores includes like the uh, uh, tools that uh, are known as the merchant software that are very easy for conducting online sales. So the most common tools are an electronic catalog, a search engine that helps the consumers find products in the catalog and electronic uh, shopping cart 
for the holding items until the checkout or e auction facilities where the auctions take place, like um, payment gateway also will be available there where payment arrangement can be made. A shipping center will be there where shipping arrangements are made, and the customer service will be there, which includes the products and service warranty information and the customer relationship management. Now let's see what exactly uh, comes uh, under the types of the stores and the malls. So here electronic malls are there. So let us check what exactly comes under the electronic malls. So before we proceed with the electronic malls, I just want to tell you that this uh, types of stores and malls, they uh, like uh, the storefronts, there are various types of it. Like first is general store on malls. So these are the large market spaces that sells the types of the products. Like example, Amazon.com. They uh, uh, sell the uh, products and services to major public. And this all major departments and discount stores also fall into these categories. These are the general store malls. Second is specialized stores. So this sell only one or few types of products such as books, flowers, wines, cars or pet toys. So Amazon.com has started as a specialized ebook store, but today it is a generalized store. Right, 1800, like here you must have seen this flower.com. They sells the flowers and the related gifts. Fashionmall.com, they are into the beauty this products. So all these are like specialized stores which see uh, deals into only few products or specialized products. Then we have regional versus global stores. So this is another e-classification of these stores where we sell the products. Um, uh, regionally as well as globally. <clears throat> For example, in the tourist or tourism industry, e-stores like AOR India is in like are among the local stores of India where while airtel.com is a global e-store because some stores such as e-grossers or sale, uh, sellers of heavy furnitures, <clears throat> they serve the customers that live nearby. For example, there are certain companies, they uh, deliver uh, the grocery into their uh, particular uh, region only. They will not be available globally. So that uh, comes under the regional and the global stores. Some companies, they provide the pro uh, services or products globally. Also, some provides only regionally. Pure online organizations and they Click and modern stores will also come under this category. So this is the last classification. And this is that pure online store and the click and mortar stores. So here the pure online stores sell their products only through the online stores. The best example of this are Amazon.com and MakeMyTrip.com, which operates only through the Internet, whereas click and mortar stores are the stores where you will find them physically present also. And they will also provide you through online facility. And again, then second classification is the. Electronic malls, so in addition to shopping at individual web stores, consumer can shop in electronic malls also e malls. These are similar to malls in physical world. And e-mall that is online mall is an online shopping location where many stores present their catalogs. The mall charges commission from the sellers based on their sales volume. For example, the e-mall of Maine uh, that, that is like e-malls of America.com e, uh, is an e-mall that aggregates the products and services and the providers in the uh, like uh, in various state. So it contains a directory of uh, vacation services, product categories, the vendors in each category. So when a consumer indicates a category he or she is interested in, the consumer is transferred to the appropriate independent web store. So this kind of mall does not provide any shared services. It is merely a directory. Other malls such as choicemall.com or itsy.com do provide some shared services. So here again they operate electronically. Whereas an electronic storefront presents a single store and electronic malls also known as cyber mall or e-mall and it is a collection of individual shops which are grouped under a single internet address. Right, so this is the basic difference between the electronic stores and the. Electronic mall. 
so here the basic idea of an electronic mall is the same as of regular shopping mall to provide a one stop shopping place that offers a wide range of products and services a cyber mall may include thousand of vendors for example microsoft shopping includes 10 of thousands I'm, of products uh, i can't see the screen others can you see the screen i can see the uh, type of types of okay. e marketplace screen uh, we are talking about that only yeah that's visible so if you are not able to see please leave and rejoin you will be able to okay. see it okay. right so that is e mall so so mall organizers like google is also a mall organizer what they do they take the commission from sellers for this service then again uh, here uh, let's uh, talk about uh, the private e marketplaces so private e marketplaces are those owned and operated by a single company like starbucks.com dell.com target.com united.com they sell from their website that is why it is known as private e marketplaces so private markets are either sell side or buy side in means it means in a sell side e marketplace a company will sell either standard or customized products to the individuals or to the businesses so this type of selling is considered to be one to many so in a buy side e marketplace a company purchases from many potential suppliers this type of purchasing is considered to be many to one and it is a b2b activity for example some hotels buy their supplies from approved vendors that comes to its e market walmart buys goods from thousands of suppliers private marketplace can be open only to selected members and not to all the public because sometimes they feel that we want to sell only to few people then public market e marketplaces so this are often uh, owned by the third party may be it is a seller or not a buyer or by a small group of buying or selling companies they serve many sellers and many buyers so it is a kind of intermediary so they are open to public and sometimes these are also regulated by the governments so government also regulated so that is public e market places which is available to everyone now let's see the functions of e market places so when we talk about the functions of e market places all of us know that the uh, most important function of e market place is to uh, make uh, people uh, like by matching of buyer and seller it is the most important uh, function of e market place like uh, because here the task of uh, the e market place is to make uh, the buyers and sellers available with each other so that is very important here to understand like so the main function of the e market place is matching the buyers and the sellers and this will help them in exchange of goods information and services and also they will help in uh, processing the payments which are associated with the transactions and here providing an institutional infrastructure like here it is very important to understand that this marketplaces needs to be regulated uh, and they need to do work in as per the legal and the regulatory framework because this will enables the efficient functioning of the marketplace otherwise the people will take the undue advantage of the marketplace and they will uh, go away they will not make use of it i would suggest you to just read this so that you will get more clarity about the functions like matching of buyers and the sellers so here they will match the buyers with the sellers because here they will try to find it out like what are the offerings or product offerings are available with buyers also this uh, the features of the e the process quick and easy second feature is here like they connect online market whatever reviews they have mentioned i have just tried because mention will be available they will also arrange for the bed and the bartering uh, and they need to do
So when we talk about the functions of e marketplaces, all of us know that the uh, most important function of e marketplace is to uh, make uh, people uh, like by matching a buyer and seller. It is the most important uh, function of e marketplace, like uh, because here the task of uh, the e marketplace is to make uh, the buyers and sellers available with each other. So that is very important here to understand like. So the main function of the e marketplace is matching the buyers and the sellers, and this will help them in exchange of goods, information and services, and also they will help in uh, processing the payments which are associated with the transactions and here providing an institutional infrastructure like here it is very important to understand that this marketplaces needs to be regulated uh, regulated by the arrange for the bid and the bartering systems things or product offerings are available with Not make use of it. I would suggest you to just read this so that you will get more clarity about the functions like matching of buyers and the sellers. So here they will match the buyers with the sellers because here they will try to find it out like what are the offerings or product offerings are available with buyers, what are the features, right? So here the buyers will search for the sellers and sellers will search for the buyers so price and the product information will be available they will also arrange for the bid and the bartering systems so here they will match the sellers offers with buyer preferences both will discover the like the price discovery will happen so the buyers will discover that what is the price so here and sometimes sellers will also have the bid process so the prices will be determined through this process and this will also help the buyer to compare the prices online and they will also provide the sales leads also this uh, e-marketplaces like sometimes if you are searching for something or sometimes if you have searched for suppose suite so they will uh, show you other uh, other uh, marketplaces also where you can find the same type of products so this is called as analytics they will keep a track of what you are searching for then facilitation of transactions. So logistics. They will provide you logistics like distribution plays an important role. So delivery of information, goods or services to buyers will be easily available with the help of e marketplaces. Then e marketplace will also help you in settlement. So transfer of prices, transfer of payment to sellers is also possible with the help of the e marketplaces. Right. So uh, this is again uh, happens when we talk about the e marketplace then settlement also like sometimes transfer of payment to sellers this is also done with the help of the e marketplaces then trust so credit system your reputations rating agencies such as customer reports and the triple uh, b the special escrow system is there online trust agencies are there they will definitely help you in building the trust amongst the buyers and the sellers and the communication they will also post buyers request here then institutional infrastructure as i told you that this should happen legally it should be regulated by somebody so here the commercial code is there certain contract laws will be there disputes resolution mechanism will be there intellectual property production will be there export and import laws will be there so this needs to be regulated by rules and regulations. Some monitoring needs to be done, like certain laws should be enforced on this e-marketplaces also so that they will not make the undue advantage of the buyers. Then discovery here, they needs to provide the market information, like example about their competition and government regulations. So these are the functions of e-marketplaces. Now let's see the features of the e-marketplaces quickly. So these features are first a quick and easy onboarding process for sellers. Right? So like here, uh, 
if we see honestly speaking like the sailors are the most or extremely busy people they don't want to spend too much time registering and joining the platforms like they are the key objective their key objective is to make life easier here because uh, sailors also join this e marketplaces so here the goal needs to be that onboarding process should be as quick and as easy as possible so a great example of quick and easy seller onboarding comes from Etsy because here what you can do, you can see a snippet from their language page, uh, sorry, their uh, landing page and uh, from the sailors. So they uh, on this landing page, they have cited all the features and benefits that sailors are going to enjoy. And it's a pretty long page. So to, to make this process easier for the sailor, a good practice is to set up a user friendly page containing all the in, uh, needed information for sailors registration. Uh, so here another like good way to make the onboarding easier is to prepare a short videos for your sailors each with each one like displaying one to one step of onboarding process. With the, besides onboarding, there sure should be short instructional videos and it can be prepared for every back office feature of your online marketplace. Like for example, sailors would highly appreciate if you had a video displaying the process of adding a product to their seller's stores. So a good step forward will be to automate this process as much as it is possible. So definitely uh, this is one of the feature which will help onboarding process complete because if you have the minimum uh, amount, if you will require minimum amount of time in dealing with your people, definitely uh, this will help them in uh, making the process quick and easy. Second feature is here like they connect online marketplace with the social media. Right, so. E marketplaces what they do, they connect. So shopping always like uh, is a, a sentimental kind of thing for people. If we are shopping online, social media can replicate that communal experience so generally customers are very much keen to show what they bought ask for some opinions on certain products or just talk about some products and services they have encountered so social media proves to be an efficient way to spread the word about your products and generally speaking your online marketplace should have this facility available with you like coupling your products with the personal endorsement uh, has the potential to increase the traffic on your online marketplace and in the end it proves to be the conversion rate for the customers like be sure that we know we need to be sure that we need to connect our online marketplaces with those of social platform where your target audience is so we need to make it sure that our target audience will needs to be connected with this social media so the best advertising is done by happy customers. Uh, uh, like there is one one store, online store that is known as Hariba. Have you heard about it? Any one of you? No, ma'am, not me. It is it is about like sweets. Like if you go and if you check their reviews on uh, this uh, Facebook social media right so if you go and check everybody writes so nicely about them like if you feel and the pictures are also so much tempting that you will feel like trying and the whatever reviews they have mentioned i have just tried because of that social media only so this is really an amazing platform which will help the companies to convert their target audience so here the best advertisement is done by happy customers and definitely if they will share their opinions about the uh, product on social media it will connect you with the uh, other customers so just here we i just want to say that social media plays a big role in e-commerce landscape so if any company uh, aiming towards selling digital products we need to make it sure that we are starting uh, on a platform where our products needs to be connected with the social media also then wish list for your buyers. Again, this is very important that our buyers should have uh, the wish list available. So your wish list is an online marketplace feature that allows the buyers to create their online product collection that they are interested in buying and 
they can save that collection for future references. So here, this signify a buyer's interest in specific products. So without showing intent to buy the product immediately, sometimes what they do, they save it in the wish list. So for a portion of buyers, a wish list is an extremely important feature. It provides them with an opportunity to save any of the products for later. So uh, if they currently cannot commit to purchase or afford to buy a product right now, so they can uh, return to those products whenever they want. So it also serves some customers for creating the shopping list for some major events such as wedding, birthday and so on. So if the buyers cannot find that they are looking for on your online marketplace, they will go somewhere else. So to bring the number of buyers uh, uh, that they should uh, exiting uh, your marketplace to a minimum of powerful search is very much important here. So here uh, we need to make it sure that our buyers will get what exactly they want and they can uh, make uh, this into the wish list. So again, powerful search is also very important. So suppose if the product is not available, you may the website should have this kind of feature available that, that it may show the similar product uh, to the buyer. So powerful uh, search is very important. It is a perquisite for a, a e-marketplace. So like this uh, uh, will also help the marketplace to uh, advance and to make their customers happy. Like today customers are using technology constantly in their day-to-day -day activity especially during online shopping. So it is no easy uh, task to surprise them with an online marketplace platform. But still, there are certain ways like you can leverage it and you can uh, leverage new technology, new trends, and you may prove to be highly successful. Uh, so yes, this is uh, available here. And the last is voice search option. All of us use this voice search. So like, it is again changing the way people search their products and services online. So according to one of the Forbes publication, more than 50% of all internet searches will be done using voice search by the end of 2020. So voice search is getting a lot of traction and marketers and SEO specialists are placing their bets on their strategies. They are focusing on full voice search optimization in e-commerce. So this online marketplace feature is like uh, widely spread across different online platforms. So here we need to make it sure that this kind of options are available. So this is another feature which will be available in the e-marketplaces. Now let's see what comes under the auction. So here we are going to talk about the auction. So auction is what it is a market mechanism and here we use a competitive process by which a seller solicits consecutive bids from the buyers like it is known as forward auction or a buyer solicits bids from the seller reverse auction. In simple words what happens if seller wants to uh, sell something so here uh, the seller they are looking for the bids from the buyer like buyer will bad, uh, make a bid that I will pay this much to the buyer. So this will be known as the uh, forward auction or a buyer will ask for the bid from the seller. So so many sellers will be available and they will make a bid to the buyer and it is known as reverse auction. Like seller A, B, C will be available and one buyer will be available and ABC will make their bid to the buyer so that buyer will have the best option available at less price. So your prices are determined dynamically by the bids. A wide variety of online market qualify as auctions using this definition like. So auctions are established method of commerce for generations. The deal with the products and services for which the conventional marketing channels are ineffective or inefficient. So they use prudent execution of sales. Like for example, auctions can uh, quickly make the process. They can dispose the items that need to be liquidated or sold quickly, like rare coins, other collectibles are often and frequently sold through the auctions. So these are the types of auctions which are available. One buyer, one seller, 
one seller, many potential buyers and one buyer, many potential sellers. As the name itself is suggesting. Right, that one buyer, one seller. It means here one buyer will be there and one seller will be there. Both will bid, right? Second type of auction, one seller and many potential buyers. So one seller will make a bid and what a, many potential buyer will be there. So here the seller will be having uh, the. Uh, will make the best money, right? Because of it, so it will be easy for the seller to understand what exactly. Uh, they want to have. So yes, this happens like uh, Sailors will be able to make best use of these auctions because many buyers are there, only one seller is there. So monopoly will be there, you can say. Next is one buyer and many potential sellers. So if one buyer is there, the monopoly of buyer will be more as compared to the seller because so many sellers are available, supply is more and the demand is less. So this kind of auctions are available. Let's move on to the limitations of auctions. So when we talk about the limitations of the auctions, like here when we see the security, right? So security. <coughs> sorry. Security is the major issue when we uh, talk about the auction. Right, because we are not sure like who is uh, doing what here, whether uh, it will be uh, secured or not. Because uh, really online, it, it is very difficult to trust, like whether the transaction we are making is secure or not. We have heard so many times about the frauds which are happening at the marketplaces, so generally e-marketplaces. So some of the auctions which may be conducted on internet are maybe not secure. Because you know what happens? Most of them are done in unencrypted form or you can say poorly protected environment. So this means that the credit card numbers can be stolen during the payment process also. So payment methods such as PayPal can be used to solve the problems. In addition to this, some B2B auctions are conducted over highly secured private lines. So to, with the help of this, we can reduce this limitation. Or we can overcome this problem. Then comes the possibility of the fraud. In many cases, auction items are very much unique. Right, they are antique. And because the buyers cannot see and touch these items, the buyers may receive something different than he or she had in mind. So in addition to that, the products may be sometimes defective. Buyers may also commit fraud, like by receiving the product or goods without paying them. So thus the fraud rate in e-auction is relatively high. Right so, uh, on the internet. So here we need to be very careful if we deal with the e-marketplaces. Then limited participation. So here the participation uh, is also very much limited. We have a few more also. I will talk about it like the participation is also very much limited, like some auctions are by invitation only. Others are open to dealers, so limited participation may be disadvantage to the sellers who usually benefit from a large pool of audience, uh, buyers as an audience. So buyers may also be unhappy if they are excluded from the participation. This is also one of the limitation. Then we can say the next limitation, which uh, I have not shown you here, but I can talk about it like prolonged time. So a live auction has one day of bidding, whereas the timed auction <laughs> runs over a few days. So there is also a time delay as the auction closes as bidders are able to price bids in the last minute and therefore causing the auction time to extend. So this is to like again a problematic thing. Then anonymous bidders are there. So online auctions does not take place face to face, which creates anonymous bidders. So auctionaries cannot have hold on who is participating in the bidding. And this can lead to a lot of anonymity in identifying the bidders. So again, uh, this is also one of the limitation here. Now let's see the impacts of the 
auction. Right? So impact of the auction, right? Auction uh, has lot of impacts. So first is auction as a coordination mechanism. So when we talk about the auction, they are like uh, they work as a coordination mechanism, right? Here you need to coordinate, like you need to coordinate the activities of your uh, buyer, your seller, like whom with whom you are coordinating, you are buying. So it really makes difficult for you to understand like what is happening, who is doing what. So uh, again, it is a coordination kind of mechanism which really makes it difficult for the people to understand what exactly they are supposed to do. Then second impact of the auction is like auction as a social mechanism to determine a price. People use auction because they want to identify how much price they will get for a product which is available with them in the market. So sometimes what happens they use it as a mechanism with the help of which they just want to determine the price. Then auctions as a highly visible distribution mechanism. So they feel that it is a way with the help of which we can uh, make our uh, product visible to large number of audience and it will be a really great platform where we can if it is visible to large number of audience and if the demand is more then we will be able to make a best use of it and we will be able to generate the money out of it so that is their uh, say here then auction as an e-commerce component. So auction is one of the component of e-commerce and just uh, it is a component. So people try to make use of it and they want to create a lot of impact uh, from this and they want to um, deal with the people with whom they have not dealt before. Then e-commerce in the wireless environment. So the widespread adoption of wireless and mobile networks devices like such as smartphones, uh, are available right so here what happens like a lot of wireless options are available like people can move from one place to another and they can make use of this wireless phones so here middleware like softwares that links the application module from different computer languages and platform and it is also creating a lot of new opportunities for the people so people here what they are doing they are using the technologies and they are making mobile computing possible. So these technologies, they will help them to have the real time access to the informations, the applications, the tools that until recently were accessible only from a desktop computer. Now mobile compute commerce or M commerce refers to the conduct of e-commerce via wireless device from portable devices. It is also called as M business. So it is mobile like the you can use these applications on the mobile devices, maybe your mobile phone, maybe your tab, maybe your computer, laptop, which is movable from one place to another. So it is very easy nowadays. Now let's see the competition in the digital environment and its impact on the industry. Like what kind of competition is happening when we talk about the E environment and what kind of impact it is uh, creating in the industry. Right. So uh, like digitalization, if we see that it has reshaped the competitive dynamics in the economy and it has created new markets, it has transformed the existing ones. So this has presented a lot of uh, competition, lot of challenges for the authorities, right? So there are a lot of factors which uh, creates the impact and the, these are the very competitive factors and digital uh, economy and it is creating a lot of impact on the industry. So first factor is growth of internet. Excuse me. Just a minute. Yeah. Growth of the internet, right? As we all know that internet has grown to a great extent and um, in the past five years, if we see that we have seen the tremendous growth in the internet and it is making it um, a potential place for communicating to many customers. 
both uh, efficiently as well as the cost effectively. So here are the process of e-marketing by which a customer over the internet is reached through electronic mails or maybe other form of adverts in the websites. This attracts the attention to the target customers eventually and it is conducting a potential sales. So the fact is that internet can effectively communicate to a mass segment of people irrespective of their age, caste, color, gender and makes it potential tool to promote the products and services offered by the organization. So it is again uh, one of the factor which is a competitive factor and it is creating a lot of impacts on the profits of the organization and the revenues of the organization. Second factor is security and data protection. So the presence of a strict laws enforcing the data protection and privacy of information along with the legal restrictions and the guidance to conduct the transactions over the internet in a secured fashion. And this is again a major accelerating factor for the growth of electronic commerce, especially by providing the customers with the confidence and the faith of severe action against any fraudulent activities or misuse of the personal information or financial information. So this initiative of government has not only encouraged the customers, but especially the business organizations also in competing in the market to identify new customers and reach a wider demography with their products. So this is again a factor which can increase the competition because Nowadays, if you see security and data protection is there everywhere and the strict laws are there, so definitely it is a factor which is creating impact. Next is growth in technology, right? So technology, we have seen the tremendous growth in the technology nowadays. Like it is very easy, right? We can compare, we can see uh, the factors like the growth is also there. The lower prices are also there nowadays because of growth of technology. What is happening? There are no barriers to entry and it has uh, like barriers to the entry also got reduced because of this. Uh, it is also affecting. The business and it is also impacting the industry, so like uh, barriers have got reduced. Virtual partnership is also there. A speedy comparison is also possible. So a speedy comparison, if it is possible, definitely it will affect the economy. So all these factors are like ultimately affecting the growth and the profitability and the revenue of the companies as a whole. Now see, this is a portal's competitive forces model, like how this internet influences the industry structure. This is a model where um, you can see like you it is a kind of a self-explanatory model i just give you two three minutes please read it is it visible to you uh, yes ma'am it's visible huh. so yeah this uh is the last slide so just read it carefully because this model will help you to understand like competitive forces, like how this affects influence the industry structure, like first is bargaining power of suppliers, right? But, so bar just have a look and then we will discuss. See for a minute. If before we proceed with this topic till now, if you have any questions, please ask me or else we will start with this topic. Um, I have a couple of questions. Yeah, please. Uh, on one of the slides wherein you had mentioned that for e-business, uh, there is a regulation. So is there any dedicated regulator assigned for e-business or the general governance by Ministry of Corporate Affairs oversees it? It general governance. OK. Hmm. And like uh, we have cyber security places also available, right? They are taking care of the cyber crimes which are happening. OK, and other uh, laws like uh, I mean all the company laws and corporate uh, uh, the contract laws must be applicable, right? Correct. OK, and second question is uh, why there is no escrow account based payment system available in e-commerce here because there is a lack of trust between the sellers and buyers. So hmm. if the marketplace can provide an escrow account wherein uh, the payer will uh, the buyer will pay it into the escrow account and when the product is received upon satisfactory uh, receipt and usage, uh, maybe after five, five, six days, the payment can be released. 
Uh, why is there no such mechanism available? Because usually the banks provide such guarantees in uh, physical transfers, but mm. I see uh, nothing in case of even a bigger uh, uh, set of articles. Uh, it, it it's all based on the uh, like uh, what do you say uh, Amazon bestseller and those kinds of things we have to just trust on. There is no right. escrow account based system yet. I feel that uh, the in, like in India people. Uh, uh, they make the purchases on the basis of the trust, right? So um, that is why I don't think so that government has thought of it now. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, ma'am. Yes. When we talk about types of auction, huh. we have discussed uh, from your teaching, uh, we got to know that, that there are three types of e-auction. Correct. So See. I have a confusion on type one and type three, where in type one there is one buyer and one seller. So okay. what kind of auction is it? Because there is no bidding going to happen. Buyer has uh, fixed some uh, figure, then seller has to agree on this, or at max a seller can make an offer. So it, can it be understood as one of the auction? Yes, it is one of the auction, right? So here buyer and seller, one buyer, one seller will be available. So here, like if they agree on the terms and conditions, they can go ahead with this. Otherwise, it the sale will not happen in this place. So why is it called auction? It is a type of auction because here also they will make a bid, right? Buyer will make his own bid and the sellers will make his own bid. If they will agree to it, then only their sale will proceed, otherwise it will not. All right, so we can understand it as uh, there is a, a fluctuation in the figure, like Correct. has been offered, then like uh, buyer will offer something else, seller will offer something else. And if they will reach to the conclusion, then only the auction will take place. All right, understood. Thank you. Right. <clears throat> uh, one comment on this, ma'am. Typically, yeah. this happens for uh, uh, some priced items. And wherein uh, it's it's by invitation, but only for one seller at a time. So it okay. opens the uh, invite for one seller. They negotiate, and if the negotiation fails, then this auction closes, and another auction opens for the same product for another seller. This is okay. how typically I've seen it, especially for uh, paintings and all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for this example. So, this could be this could be the second type where is one seller and many potential buyer because this is what you have said is uh, maybe a way of doing it. But there are others uh, buyers. Yeah, but typically in that yeah. case, all of them bid together. Yeah, uh, so here so many open. buyers will be available. Only one seller will be available. So they do it together at the so same time. So this is type two. Yes. Now let's see this because we have only few minutes available. Porter competitive forces model, how this affects and influence the industry structure. So first is bargaining power of supplier. So here procurements is done using the internet and this tends to rise. So bargaining power over the suppliers. So here what happens? Uh, through it can also give suppliers access to more customers. So here, see, all of us know that nowadays the bidding and everything is happening like online. So suppliers will also get a lot of power because if online is there, so he will also will be having access to all the buyers geographically, right? So uh, it will be worldwide, right? He can supply his products. So definitely with the help of this model, the suppliers bargaining power will be more. The internet will provide a channel for suppliers to reach to the end users, like reducing the leverage of uh, intervening companies. So directly suppliers can reach to the end users. They are not required to use any intermediary for it. Internet procurement and digitalization markets, they also tend to give all the companies equal access to suppliers. So every company will have the equal access to suppliers and here the procurement of standards or standardized products uh, can also reduce differentiation because the, if suppliers will not provide these standardized products or products to the customers next time they will not go and buy it. 
here reduce barriers to entry. So entry barriers will also get reduced because here the uh, lot of suppliers will be available. And this is the reason like nowadays if you see globalization is there, technology we are using, e-commerce is available. So entry barriers are not there and it will be very easy uh, for the suppliers to be available at any place at any time. And again, this will reduce suppliers. Uh, power somewhat because of lot of competitions available. Then here comes the rivalry amongst the existing competitors. So reduces differences among the competitors as the offerings are difficult to keep proprietary. So see here when we talk about the competitors. Here the differences amongst the competitors will get reduced because if everything is available online, people will keep a check of it and they will they can also provide this kind of products to uh, their customers. So here the, the, the uh, competition has been migrated to price. So price is a really a very important role which plays here. Uh, where the price plays an important role here. This also widens the geographic market and increases the number of competitors. It also lowers the variable uh, cost and fixed cost and it will also increase the price. Uh, uh, pressures for the pricing or the discounts here. Then let's see about the buyers. What happens? It eliminates the powerful channels or improves the bargaining power over the traditional channels. Like traditional channels, what was happening with the buyer during the traditional channels? They were only able to have limited bargaining because they were only having the access to limited products and the services. But because of that, because of this elimination, like uh, because of this kind of e marketplaces, they will also power. They also negotiate with the lot of sellers which are available to them. Shift bargaining power to end consumers. So because of this, the bargaining power can also be shifted to end consumers. And here it reduces switching cost. So see. Uh, switching cost is what like suppose if you are buying from one buy say seller and if you uh, now are not satisfied with, with him and if you switch on to the other seller then you can reduce your switching cost with the help of this like here you are not required to pay too much switching cost because you are not required to go here and there and then you are not required to search there let's see the entry barriers so it reduces the barriers to entry such as the need for a sales force access to channels and physical asset. Anything that internet technology offers, it eliminates or makes easier to do, uh, reduces barriers to entry. So here the barrier to entry will also get reduced because of this, like here uh, you are not required to have the physical asset or a lot of money. Just uh, if you can make use of internet technology, it will reduce all other barriers to entry and you can enter into the marketplace. Then internet applications, they are very difficult to keep uh, the proprietary from new entrants, right? So your new entrants can easily enter, right? Now, uh, day, days, if you see, there will be no entry barriers for any kind of business because everything is so much changed. Uh, like you must have seen the way the business was doing, the companies were doing business has changed completely. So it becomes really easy for people to enter into the market. And the flood of new entrant has came into many industries. So many industries, like if you see the startups, they have grown to a great extent. Nowadays, a lot of new entrants have came into the many industries. Threat of substitute. So by making the overall industry more efficient, the internet can expand the size of the market. So if you see like there is no entry barrier so many sellers and the buyers are available at a single place so internet has expanded the size of market like anything so many substitutes are available so but people can ship from one substitute to another and it creates a lot of substitution threat for the people or the companies who are available in this kind of marketplaces. So it really becomes uh, a threat for the companies uh, to deal with this kind of product. So here, like this is influencing the structure of companies and structure of uh, the e-commerce sector like any way, right? It is creating a lot of impact because you need to provide your products and the services in such a way that it needs to be very, very uh, useful and 
helpful because your products needs to be somewhat unique like nowadays if you see some businesses what they are doing they are pitching their uh, or they are making their advertisement in such a way that they are playing with the emotions of the people like uh, some companies they are making advertisement that we are whatever we are earning we are using these revenues for the development of india and not for other countries like you must have seen patanjali they uh, tell you that our focus is on the development of the products in such a way that it should reach uh, the revenue should generate uh, the the revenue that we generate is used by the india we are not using for the development of any other country so they are playing with the emotions right so if this is the case that it influences definitely the industry structure like if everything is available online then the competitiveness will also get affected threats will also be available like if entry barriers are not there so here both buyers and the sellers both have the bargaining powers so this was the last topic with this topic we have completed this second unit